You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present Selling One Soul by John Fryer with Ben Morris and Annabelle Spinks-Jones. Good evening. My name is George Taylor and I represent ACE Capital Investments. We have been charged with taking soundings from the local community over the proposed redevelopment of East Brenton-on-Trent. This very area, in fact. Now, I know that to many of you here this evening, I must appear the enemy, but nothing could be further from the truth. Of course, the attitude, thoughts, and feelings of your neighbors matter. As adults, we learn that nothing remains the same. Everything with time changes. Those we remember from our youths, we inevitably lose contact with over the years. We cannot hope to continue through our lives as we have lived as children. In essence, ladies and gentlemen, we grow up. And growing up is hard. Growing up hurts. No one likes to face difficult decisions, but face them you all know we must. Brenton-on-Trent is one of the most deprived areas of the country. Businesses have either closed or moved away, and they are not coming back. House prices have meant that even those of you that are employed have little chance of ever getting your feet on the housing ladder, and with inflation and diminishing wages each year, it can and will only get harder for you. And for your family. The longer you stay here, the tougher it is going to get. The offer is that the government will pay to move all to more affluent areas of the country where your economic opportunities will be greater. This is our community. And will that community make up the shortfall on the rent this month? Does the community come together to pay the electricity bill? There is no community where I live. It is everyone for themselves. And those that place their community before their family will, with time, have to explain to those family members why, when offered this opportunity, they turned it down. If you will not do what is right for you and yours when it is offered, then who will? If you want to be the centre of attention, this is your moment. Good evening. Um, I think what my colleague, Mr. Taylor, meant to explain was that sometimes we have to be prepared to consider problems in a different way. I'm 22, I also live in London, and right now, I'll never acquire the £100,000 needed for a deposit to buy a house in the capital. The average wage is £27,000, and yet 41% of the country earns £18,000 or less. If you've ever tried saving £100, you'll know how tough it is. £100,000? Not a real aspiration, is it? I'd be better off signing up for the first one-way trip to Mars and putting my towel on a deck chair around the swimming pool before the Germans arrive. <laughs> we have to live in the real world, not the one we wish was real. For in the real world, when things don't work out for you, you have to be creative, and you this evening will have to be more creative than those that came before you. Many of you may even have seen in this evening's newspaper the open letter signed by 50 business leaders and economists who can see the social effects of high-priced property and the results this will have on the next generation. And then the one after that. And the one after that. That's your children. And then your grandchildren. Each generation poorer than the previous. Then what can we do? The government 
is offering £10,000 for every household that agrees to relocate. <laughs> to some of you, that might sound like a bribe. To others, you probably don't care. But when was the last time someone offered your family that kind of money? That won't buy you a house in the South. It won't even buy you a house in the North. But please remember, Britain isn't the world anymore. Even Europe is not the world. And not all countries have the same housing policies. One day, people will go to Mars. They will have to. When life is no longer sustainable here, and if your lives are not sustainable at Brenton-on-Trent, then you will have to seek your futures elsewhere. And that may not necessarily be on what in reality is no more than this piece of land sticking up out of the water. A wise person once said, no one makes money from working. It's true, only land is ultimately worth anything because it is finite. There's only so much of it. Be the pioneers that are going to Mars. Do not get stuck in the thinking of the past. Don't be afraid to look over the horizon and into the future. Be the heroes that each one of you once dreamed of being. There are parts of the world where your money goes further and buys you more. Take the money the government's offering. Buy your children the future elsewhere that this area no longer offers. Make all your tomorrows better than today. Thank you. I see you read my notes. The money? That was what you wanted me to see, wasn't it? If you hadn't stood up, then it was my next pitch. I like the bit about Mars. Inspiring. Ah, Simon. Lawrence, who's your friend? How's the website coming along? Over 5,000 subscribers as of 6 this evening. Good. We need to control the debate as much as possible. You certainly controlled it this evening. What did you think of my performance? Glad to see you learned the speech. Word perfect, as far as I could see. One does one's best. Love to stay and chat, but I have to go and meet some of the diehards and find out what their strategy is for beating us. Sorry, I meant you. See you in the office next week. Bye. What? Don't be jealous. His performance was almost as good as yours. A day in politics can indeed be a very long time. A government policy reversed, a housing minister forced to change his position, and even a local meeting in which over 60% of those that attended finished by voting for their own removal. It doesn't get much stranger than that. But that is exactly what happened today in one of the most deprived areas of the land. Are we done for the day? Your father, like me, is no longer young. It can be quite hard to accept that our parents are only mortal, like ourselves. We like to believe that we will go on forever. None of us do, of course. This doesn't sound like you, Lawrence. One day you will have to let them go, take up their mantle and carry on. Do you understand? What are you trying to tell me? Your father is no more healthy than your mother. And even my dashing good looks will not last forever. Today was not some sort of work experience day. Today was you beginning to learn the ropes of the family business. The world works on contacts, not talent. You may indeed have talent, but I have the contacts. In a year's time, both your father and I will retire and leave the business to you question is, do you want it? You lie, you cheat, and con people. You want me to inherit that crown? We call it working for a living. Who's footing the bill for everything today? A full-page letter in the evening paper? Had to be paid by someone. Officially, it's the government. And unofficially? 
If you had known the names of the businesses and economic leaders that put their names to this idea, you would have seen that at least three of them were directors of a company called the Global Energy Consortium, GEC for short. What is your second question? How do you know I have a second question? What is so important about East Brenton-on-Trent? A very smart question. That part of Sussex just happens to be sitting on the newest, largest natural gas deposit in the whole of the British Isles. No matter what we offer the residents, it will be as nothing to the projected returns on the open market once production is up and running. But you got those people in Brenton more than anyone else would have offered them. And you were right. Taking that money and placing it where it will be worth more is how the wealthy think. During the consultation process, Simon will get them another £5,000 for each household. The residents will think they've done well. All mapped out from the beginning. How the world works. How your world works, Lawrence. You are the one to take over this business because you can help people who will initially only see you as the enemy. And if you don't, I assure you, Claire, others will. And they will never have the people's interests at heart like you do. It's your decision. Good evening. My name is Louise Richards from ARP Investments Limited. We are here tonight to discuss the government's proposed movement for 5,000 of you from this area to relocate and the reasons that some are in favour and others are against. But before I do, did any of you see the open letter on page 10 of this evening's paper? Make several good points and is backed by over a hundred leading economists, professors, and those from the business community. Now, I know that right now I must look like just one more corporate suit, but I hope that by the end of this meeting, we can not only come to a more profitable outcome, but you will also see me as your friend. Some of you may even come to see me as your only friend. In Selling One's Soul, Ben Morris was Lawrence, Annabel Spinks-Jones was Claire, Robin Ingram was Rupert Bolingbroke, Dan Martin was Gordon, Ian Sterling was Simon, Juliet Vaughan Turner was the radio interviewer, Adam Courting was the first reporter, Adam Boyle was the second reporter, Hannah Hughes was the first radio presenter, Hiral Vasani was the second radio presenter, jean Luca Murphy was the Prime Minister, and Rory Hobson was the voice at the back of the room. Artwork for the production was by Sheila Jackson, and the play was written and directed by John Fryer. Selling One's Soul is an audio production for Political Art 